Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out the Viltrox DC 550 Pro Portable LED Field Monitor. This field monitor has a 5.5 inch touchscreen design and it'll be perfect for filmmakers or content creators who need a high quality reference monitor with plenty of built-in filmmaker tools at an affordable price. While this monitor is primarily intended for filmmaking, it will also work great for live streaming or live switching applications with a switcher like the ATEM Mini Pro. Before we get started, a huge thank you to Viltrox for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. Viltrox have had no input into this video and all thoughts about this will be my own. No money's changed hands, but they are letting me hold onto this sample unit. If you want to check this out, I'll link it down in the description box below so you can check it out in your part of the world. All right, let's get into it. Let's cover the price and features. At the time of filming, this Viltrox DC 550 Pro is priced under $200, and it provides a massive selection of features compared with portable monitors that I've reviewed in the past. This Viltrox monitor has a 5.5 inch fully touchscreen display and boasts a brightness rating of 1200 nits. Additionally, the contrast rating is listed at 1200 to one. This contrast rating implies that the brightest white image is 1,200 times brighter than the darkest black, resulting in an accurate reference image, or enough to at least get you by out in the field. I had no problem seeing this screen outdoors during the day, and it was a lot brighter than both my Panasonic GH6 LCD screen and the one built into the Sony FX30. The DC550 Pro also has a wide viewing angle rated at 178 degrees, making it easy to see even from the side. The Viltrox DC550 Pro can accept a 4K signal in while outputting a full HD 1080p. The HDMI signal latency is low and what delay there is is typical for most HDMI signals. This field monitor accepts all of the standard frame rates including 24, 25, 30, 50 and 60p. Whether you're shooting a 16 by 9 project or you're using anamorphic with 1.33 times or 2.0 times D squeeze, this monitor has you covered. I love that this monitor is only 280 grams, which means it's light enough to pack for travel. Last year, I traveled to Florida with my full multi-camera setup. This would have been a great addition to my camera bag as it's lighter than the Andy Cine monitor that we took at the time. This is great for on-camera use, live switching, or live streaming situations. Let's cover all of the ports and controls. The bottom section of the monitor has our HDMI input and output ports, a single quarter inch screw point, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone audio jack. The only small critique I have is that the HDMI input is very close to the center of the monitor, which means it can be a bit of a tight fit on something like the Sony FX30 if you're mounting this directly on top of the camera or any camera that has a flat top design. Conventional HDMI cables might struggle bending out of the way in that scenario. If you are using this monitor on a cage or rig, this won't be an issue. The ports are easily cleared if you plan on using this with a Manfrotto Pixie tripod on a desk for live switching or live streaming purposes. The left side of the unit has our on and off switch and our main rotatable dial and button. The main dial moves in notches and it's easy to turn. The click functionality feels solid and it responds exactly how it should with a decent amount of force to be applied. This means you're not going to accidentally push the button when you don't mean to. It feels great under the fingers and overall it works well. On the top of the unit, we have our SD card slot, three function buttons, and a return key. The SD card slot allows you to upload a LUT directly to the monitor or to update the firmware easily. Just note, while you can insert an SD card, you can't record on this like you can with something like a YOLO box, for example. This is a field monitor for real-time viewing or playback purposes only. The F keys on top of the unit can also be customized to quickly select tools of your choice by going into the F key option within the main menu. The back of the unit is where we easily attach an MPF style battery. And the great news is Viltrox have provided one. This is fully rechargeable. And unlike every other battery like this that I've seen, it has a built in USB-C port right on the battery, which means you can charge the battery directly. And you can also check how much charge is left by pushing this button here. You can see it light up. I think this is a great touch. I also have to make mention that Viltrox has delivered one of the best detachable on monitor hoods I've used so far. This is easy to open and close. It's robust and sturdy. And unlike others I've used prior, there's no Velcro. It just simply snaps into place and you're good to go. I love this hood feature. I think it's really practical if you're shooting in challenging lighting. Now, if you're shooting indoors, you won't need it and you can simply click it off just like that. It folds up beautifully. It's nice and light. It's spring loaded. If you do have to put it back on, 
it just pops back out into place. Let's cover firmware updates. Right as I received this, Viltrox provided the latest firmware version, version 1.0.22.4.7. I hope that's right. <laughs> this added the ability to change the fan speed in three increments to low to high or to turn it off completely. It's great to see Viltrox pushing through firmware updates. While the firmware upgrade process is fairly simple, you must follow the guide to ensure it goes smoothly. The screen will go black, you just have to bear with it for a few moments before it comes back on screen, and then you're all good to go. Let's talk about the touchscreen functionality on the DC550 Pro. Overall, it's excellent. You can easily adjust the volume by swiping up and down on the left, or adjusting the screen brightness by swiping up and down on the right. Double tapping the screen will bring up the main menu option, allowing you to customize the display quickly and easily. Navigating the menus and options can all be done using the touchscreen, which is a great workflow advantage. From the settings tab, you can designate the zoom amount. This can be enabled just by tapping on the screen to punch in and out to double check focus. Let's cover some of the filmmaking tools built into the Viltrox DC550 Pro. Now by default, there's a few presets already stored on F1 and F2. F3 by default, if you've just powered this on for the first time, takes you into the main menu. By default, the waveform mode allows you to monitor the volume bar, histogram, vector scope, parade, full waveform, and the LUT table. Each of these features can be toggled on or off depending on your needs, using the bar slider under each option. When the mode option is selected, you have handy tools like false color, focus peaking, exposure, monochrome display, pixel to pixel, and more. The mark menu has a useful selection of tools, including frame zoom, aspect ratio markers, center mark, safe area, and plenty more. This can be useful if you're shooting in an open gate aspect ratio on your camera, but you want to export your video to 16x9, for example. You can load up the correct aspect ratio marker on screen. Lastly, the image menu allows you to adjust parameters like brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, backlight, brightness, color, temperature, or RGB. There's so much crammed into this. <laughs> Built into the Viltrox DC550 Pro is a selection of four preview LUTs for C-Log2, C-Log3, V-Log, and F-Log. You can, of course, select the user LUT option that allows you to monitor using a LUT of your choice. If you don't know what any of this is, I'll give you the five second version. When shooting in log, most cameras produce a desaturated image that's harder to monitor in real time. This footage is graded in post-production where the color and contrast will be applied thanks to using a LUT or lookup table file. Some cameras like the Lumix S5 Mark II, GH6, FX3 or FX30 allow you to upload a LUT directly into the camera, but most don't. This is really helpful if you have a camera without a real-time LUT preview or loader option. Each camera manufacturer has its preferred LUT file for use in post-production, but the great news is you can upload the LUT for preview purposes directly into this monitor and get a sense of how it would look once you get it home to the computer. This won't change your recording in any way as this isn't recording itself, but it allows you to get a representation of what it will look like once you get the footage home. I want to cover a couple of the practical things that I really like about this monitor. The image is clear, sharp, and bright. This is a massive upgrade over any of my on-camera fully articulating screens, and it will make your filmmaking ventures easier to produce. If you're only used to shooting with a built-in display on the back of your favorite camera, this 5.5-inch display is a total pleasure to use. I love the fact that the screen orientation will flip automatically depending on the screen's angle. It will flip much like an iPhone does when you change its horizontal position. I love the fact we can fully customize what we see on screen in any of the options. So for me personally, I don't need all of the tools built into here, but I want to know where my focus peaking is at. I want to be able to see my waveforms to make sure that I've got correct exposure and having a vector scope we can toggle on and off is also very good. So overall, this will make your workflow a lot easier. If you need all the tools under the sun, you can dial them in or you can keep it very simple. One of the tools I can't live without is the waveform tool. This allows me to get a great visual representation of how bright or dark a scene is, and then I can adjust the exposure in camera accordingly. My Lumix cameras have the waveform built in, but they don't send the waveform data to an external monitor for some reason. Hence, this allows you to get all of those great tools in a dedicated display that's bigger, brighter, and easier to see. 
And lastly, I love the fact that you can easily adjust the volume and brightness at the swipe of your finger. This is a really huge bonus. It saves you having to dive through the menus like you would on other monitors on the market. All right, let's cover what we get in the box. So Viltrox has provided their VL550 hot shoe mounting adapter portable storage case, and some micro to full-size HDMI cables. Included the pack, as I mentioned earlier, is the provided rechargeable battery. This pack gives you everything you need to get going, except for a full-size HDMI cable, which is a bit of a downer. If you need the best recommendation for a small, full-size HDMI cable, I'll link it down below. Let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. All in all, this monitor is exceptional value for money. If you want to save a few extra dollars, Viltrox also makes a non-touchscreen version of this for $30 less. For the extra 30 bucks, I think the touchscreen version is the way to go. $30 over the course of a year will cost you next to nothing. It's definitely worth the upgrade. This represents the best value for money monitor I've seen so far, and you can check it out using the links in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, all that kind of stuff. Cheers, see ya.